Marathon Weekend. Runners and walkers of all ages hitting the streets of Running City, USA for the public's Atlanta Marathon, Half Marathon, 5K, and kids races. This annual celebration of fitness in the heart of downtown Atlanta brings first-time runners, personal best seekers, and Olympic legends together. The main event, a run for the record books. After last year's race saw the fastest half marathon ever run on Georgia soil, returning champions and fresh faces are here today to make sure history is made yet again. From Centennial Olympic Park in Atlanta, Georgia, this is the Publix Atlanta Half Marathon. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Atlanta. We are in Centennial Olympic Park, the crown jewel of Atlanta's 1996 Olympic legacy and the home of Atlanta's Marathon Weekend since 2011. I'm Chris Chavez alongside Kerry Tollefson, and we are getting ready for a jam-packed day of racing, and history could possibly be made here in the state of Georgia. Carrie, I'm excited. I am so excited. You know, this event has been so much fun over the past years, but the half marathon was added and the elite competition was added back in 2021 when it was held at the Atlanta Motor Speedway and due to the pandemic, they had it there, but then they switched it. And that year when they were here at the Motor Speedway, Molly Seidel. Now everyone in America knows Molly Seidel, but she came to town right before she won her bronze medal in Tokyo. And that year, she won the race in a course ready record setting pace of 108.29. So, so fast back then. It's going to be fast again today, Chris. Yeah. So we'll take a look back at that race a couple of years ago. Yeah, 108.29 is what she ran there right before she went off to Tokyo to win that bronze medal. That was the fastest time ever run on Georgia soil then. And guess what? They came back here the following year and set a new course record. But we know so much about Molly Seidel. She has had such a phenomenal career. She loves racing here. She won her, you know, that race that year, but then she made the Olympic team here at the trial. So really cool to see Molly Seidel there. The but when they tune up for the perfect the tune conditions up that you saw out in Sapporo. Yeah, I mean when she won that bronze medal, it was pretty cool. But this was what happened last year. The race was back here in downtown Atlanta in Centennial Olympic Park. Dorcas Tuatuk. She took off and ran so well. She took seven seconds off Molly Seidel's record. It was windy, it was cold. It wasn't a fun day for them, but she ran 108.22 last year, and we might need see a new record this year. We'll have to see. It's a hilly course, but the guys are back. Listen, this man right here that's breaking the tape, he ran so well. He had such a dominant performance last year. That's Kenyan Nicholas Kasimbe. He ran his American debut last year here, and he ran one hour and 36 minutes to win by nearly two minutes, Chris. He just obliterated the competition and he's back and he's really excited to tackle the course again. Yeah, so Kasimbe is back and he is feeling pretty confident going into this one. I mean, we've seen him dominate, I guess, a couple races on the U.S. road running circuit. So, you know, I think one of the edges that he brings to this one is that he's got the experience on the course. So that's exciting. And let's take a look. So. Kasembe is back, told us he wants to better that course record. He's actually run faster in his career because he's got a personal best of one hour and 21 seconds from back in 2018, but he actually hasn't raced since October of last year when he ran 62 minutes and 37 seconds to finish 15th at a race in Tokyo. But from this, the look of this field, the yeah. competition is so stiff that he, he's going to have guys to push him towards that record. Among them are three men, three other men who have run under one hour for the half marathon, and that includes Joffrey Kowicz, who won the BAA half in November. But also, you got to keep an eye out for Bethwell Yegan. His half marathon personal best is just one hour and 57 seconds, but he did finish second at the 2021 Berlin Marathon and beat out the likes of Kennedy Sibikele, who's one of the greatest distance runners of all time. But despite all of that, Kasembe says legs are feeling good, and yesterday he's feeling good about his chances. There's a lot of guys in this race, and they're all excited, especially Bethwell Yegan. Like, he was such a fun guy to talk to, and he said he wanted to give Kasembe 
a good push to the finish line. Yeah, and Sagai uh, Kadanu from Ethiopia is also in this field with a sub-60 personal best. He's the only Ethiopian in the elite field, so the odds are stacked against him. Can, can he break up a Kenyan sweep of the podium? Right. It's going to be a nice, interesting storyline to follow uh, in the race. And on the women's side, we're going to see a brand new champion. There are three women who have run under the current course record of 68 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, I'm particularly very excited to see just how this race is going to unfold. Right there in the middle, you've got Hella Kiprop and around her, Veronica Wanjira and Vivian Chepkarui. Those are your three women who have run under that course record. Uh, Vivian Chepkarui is on a hot streak. You gotta watch out for her because she's won the Vienna Marathon two years in a row, yep. set a course record last year when she ran two hours, 20 minutes, and 59 seconds. That's no joke. <laughs> then you've also, can't discount Kiprop because she's got a strong resume of her own. She won the Copenhagen Half Marathon, won the Tokyo Marathon, back in 2016 and is the 2015 World Championship Marathon silver medalist. You got the chance to talk to her yesterday. What have you heard about this race before? Have you heard it's hard? Is it hilly, fast? What have you heard? Um, I've uh, um, heard about the discourse is not easy. It is a bit hilly. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hills and down. Yeah. What is your goal for the race tomorrow? Um, my focus tomorrow is to, to run good. I hope uh, we will run good with my colleagues. We will have a, a teamwork tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yeah, she talks about teamwork and they're gonna definitely need to do that. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, we've got, you know, a couple of these East Africans, they don't, they don't, they don't train together and we're about to catch them on the starting line, but first, the national anthem. That was beautiful, and, and now, you know, there's so many runners getting ready for this race. We've got 9,000 participants across all the different events. That includes that Masters 5K that we saw yesterday and All Comers 5K that we both ran in. Uh, kids races, today's half marathon, marathon, and our very own Allie Feller is with the man who helps kind of put this all together, Rich Kana, the CEO of Atlanta Track Club, and Brenda Reed from Publix. Yeah, we are down here at the starting line. It is exciting. Rich, the runners are the star of the show. It's very exciting, but this is a community event. What does it mean to see the community come out and celebrate Atlanta this weekend? Well, I feel like this is the first time the public marathon has returned in all its glory since the beginning of the pandemic. And as you can see from the thousands of runners behind you and us, we're ready for a great day. The weather got relatively good to us compared to last year, right? Last year when it was all rainy, but we're excited. It takes a village to your point to make this happen. And we're T minus six minutes, we'll be there. Yeah, we are getting close. Brenda, you told me you haven't missed one of these events. Why is it so important for you to make sure that you are out here 
on the ground with these runners, with the community. What does it all mean to you and the public's team? Well, I've been with Publix 22 years, so I had the opportunity to be at all of them, but I did miss one, the one down at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But what's important is that everybody gets an opportunity to come out here and demonstrate that training and going for it really pays off. And we want to be a part of that with our customers and with this community. So we're very proud to be a part of Yeah, it's working. People affectionately just refer to these races as Publix. So you're doing a darn good job. Rich, for the people watching from home, can you give us the sights and sounds of the starting line? What does it feel like right now? Uh, it feels as it should in a place that we affectionately call Running City USA. It doesn't happen without Publix and all the rest of the partners with the city, with APD. Uh, so, so this is really sort of the beginning of our spring running season here in Atlanta. Whether it's the elites or our everyday runners, first timers or veterans, what do you want them to know right now? We want them to know that the Publix Atlanta Marathon, that Publix in Atlanta Track Club welcomes every runner and walker. Whether you are the fleet of foot or whether you're a first time walker, this is a place to be in February if you're a runner. All right, well, just like Brenda, we wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you both so much for all that you do. Chris, Carrie, back to you two. Uh, all right, Carrie, so Atlanta really has become Running City USA over the last couple of years, and both you and I, you know, we're here for the trials a yep. couple of years ago, and that's when we really felt it. It oh. was awesome just how the city embraced just the whole running community. I mean, the athletes that ran the Olympic trials said it was so loud, they've never experienced anything like it, and I get to come back for a lot of the different events, and it is so much fun. I mean, they really, it's a big city, but it has this small town feel when it comes to the running community. Yeah, we felt... We felt it during the 5K, and I think today the vibes are high, and I think we're going to have tons of energy on the course for the Publix Atlanta Half Marathon, and we're going to get ready to head to the starting line for some of the elite athlete introductions, uh, and what a field. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's about to happen. It's going to happen, and I can't wait to hear it. And Ron Al Blackwell, he's out there. He's announcing, and he's having so much fun. He's going to actually race as well. He's going to run it. This is impressive. Double duty. Time world cross country silver medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Give it up for Veronica Wayne Jaro. And last but definitely not least, she is a 2016 Olympian, a winner of Tokyo and Copenhagen marathons. Give it up for Ella Kim Rose. Ladies and gentlemen, those are our lead ladies, top three, that we'll be talking to. We'll be taking out over our live stream, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook. We're here to have some fun. All right, now for our men. First up, he's run 59-22 and was the runner-up in 2021 Berlin Half Marathon. Let's give it up for Joe He won the 2022 BAA half and was third here last year. Give it up for Jeffrey Cohen. Jeffrey Cohen, come on. And last but definitely, oh, no, no, yes. Last but definitely not least, he's defending Publix Atlanta half marathon champion in the court record holder. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Give it up for Nicholas Kosembe. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are one minute, one minute from the start of today's race. We have our elites running. We have our wave airs running. We're fired up. We're getting ready. We're excited. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're excited to be here, let me hear you. Make some noise. All right, remember. The race command will be given to you by Brenda Reed, right here from Publix. Now she will be given the command runner set. Once you hear that horn, that's when you'll go. Once you hear the horn, that's when you'll go. The 
Looks like we're about 20 seconds away. All right, let's get ready, let's get ready, let's get ready. Shake it out. Inhale confidence, exhale down. Turn it up, turn it up, DJ, turn it up, DJ. I got to hear it. We got to start this race off right, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. I see you wave there. 140, wow. That's a fast pace. We got some fast runners out there. You all are looking good. You're doing wonderful wave, hey. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm allergic to Dr. Hold on, Calpeen, stop. Hold on, Calpeen, stop. Hold on, stop. Calpeen, stop. Hold on, Calpeen, stop. Hold on, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. You're going right after Wave A. You're going after Wave A. Straight googly boogly. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We're excited. We're all excited. We got to give you guys some space. We know that the push assists are fast. Three wheels are always fast. All right. The race is underway, Carrie. This field is, I mean, this is the best part about a race. It's just you got, you, as soon as it goes off, you, you have the bold guy who goes up in there. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't know what he's doing up there, but he, he, I don't think he's got any business being up there. He's going to pay the price later. Well, I mean, everyone is excited. You and I raced the 5K yesterday, and we got off the line, and we took off as well. But, you know, it feels good to hear that gun go off and to actually just get into your rhythm. They're going to actually climb a little bit in this start, and then they go downhill to about two and a half miles. So, you know, you know, there, there is something about getting getting off the line, getting into your race position, letting the, the breath kind of come back, get your second wind a little bit, and just feel the energy. It's There's so much energy, Chris. So up in the front of the pack, we've got a mostly East African presence there with the Kenyans. Uh, this is just a, such a strong field that I think like for a good portion of the early parts of the race, they're going to be pretty bunched up. And last year, we really didn't see a big move up until about 10 miles in, into the race. So uh, patience is key. Patience is key. I mean, this race is a tough race. You know, we know here in Atlanta, there's really no flat involved, but they do have some good downhill stretches. So there are, you know, different race tactics that will be played in here. And you do have to work those downhills. You got to get into that rhythm. You got to be able to push. And we're seeing a big pack of women right here. And I think that's what we heard yesterday when we were talking to them, that teamwork, right? We heard Hella say that. They were going to work together, but they are all in this to win. They want to win this, this half marathon. This is a big thing for them to have on their race resume. Right in front of them, you've got a couple guys with, you know, running with Atlanta Track Club. Uh, from your sort of race experience, uh, the men leading the way for, for the women, is this is this a little bit of a benefit or do you have like little added pacemakers in this one? Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have pacemakers up front. You know, we have a number of, of athletes that train with men yeah. they're used to having that they're you know obviously the women are looking at each other because those are the competitors that they need to beat yeah. there's prize money money there's you know accolades to be won here but it is nice to have those guys that are there to set that pace to let them know that they are on pace i mean you know the men up front don't have that but they they're they're in it to win it too and they have each other to look at one of the things that just stood out to me is a lot of turns on this. Course. Lots of turns. So it's not just the, the hills that are at a factor that maybe, you know, uh, slow people down, but the turns and being able to navigate the tangents and, and just what's the best approach to them. It, it, well, we could possibly see a move being made at some point in the race on a turn. Yeah, I mean, I love a turn when I'm in the lead because then when I look back and can't see anybody, I get excited. But then I also love when you are in the lead and you want to try to hide and get a little bit ahead of people you can really use those turns to to kind of stretch out those leads and to really make big moves so yeah it's it's a really fun course and if you have not run it i think you need to come here and run it i know i'm still feeling a, a little bit of pain i'm still feeling the uh, effects of the 5k uh yesterday <laughs> in my legs but 
one of the most powerful stories here at the Atlanta Pub Publix Atlanta Half Marathon is that this is the largest event of the year for the Kyle Peace Foundation, which creates opportunities for people with disabilities to take part in endurance events. All right, I am here with Brent and Kyle Pease from the Kyle Pease Foundation. 50 teams strong, making this their biggest event of the year. Guys, looking at this, 50 teams, you've built something pretty incredible. How's it feel? Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, we, you know, when we first came here, it was just the two of us, and to see that so many people are part of this now and you know we've got a vibe going on over the tent since 4:45 this morning and just really proud of of what we've built here and with the support of the track club it's a it's a special experience for us yeah couldn't help but notice that tent was popping this morning the energy is amazing kyle how does it feel if we were over there with you how's it feel in that tent how's everyone feeling uh it's, it's amazing this is the, one of my favorite favorite events of the year it's in the hometown city with the beautiful fat drop in and we're going to show the crazy community what a cruise kid is all about. I love that. All right, you two are not running together today. We know that you often compete together. What are the goals for today? What can we expect from the two of you? Uh, have fun. I mean, this is really our opportunity for the Atlanta running community to just show us who we are. And there's people that we haven't met yet, and somebody's going to run past us, or we're going to run past somebody. And we just, like Kyle said, we want to show them what inclusion looks like. And we're really proud that the track club supports that. And so let's show everybody in Atlanta what Running City is and where the Kyle Pease Foundation fits into that. Let's talk about that support for people who are seeing that tent over there and will see you out on the streets and thinking, I want to get involved. I want to be a part of this. What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, the best way is to go to our website, www.kylepeacefoundation.org, and that way they can connect with us and ask us questions, and we'll, we'll, we'll get started with them. What is the best way to help? Is it pushing? Is it donations? What do you need? What do you want? Uh, time, talent, treasures. I mean, it's everything. I mean, we need your time. Come out and help. Be a part of this with somebody like Kyle. Give them your legs and share them this experience of being an athlete. I mean, that's the most special part of this. But, you know, we need talent. Kyle and I are clearly not smart enough to do this on our own. And, yeah, donations, the, the donations go a long way to support our organization. The Kyle Peace Foundation, we cover all the expenses for our athletes, and so every dollar counts. All right, so if I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'd like to push an athlete. What would I need to know? And maybe I'm feeling a little intimidated. Help me out. Uh, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I used to always tell people my fastest times were running with Kyle, and I've been told that's the flawed way to share it. But what I would say is that, you know, when you get behind this chair, there, it's a special experience, you know, because you feel the energy of the athlete, you see who they are, and, and, and we found out how tough an athlete Kyle is, and you just get to experience that. So know that it is hard. It's physically hard to push a human being up these hills of Atlanta, but when you go downhill, that's the feeling that you experience here at the finish line of just being pulled with that athlete and being part of it. All right, you two. Have fun out there. Good luck. Thank you for all that you do. Kyle Pease Foundation, making a difference in the world. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Chris, Carrie, back to you. They truly are making a difference. And it's just, we got here this morning. We were one of the first people here, but there was already a big crowd and presence from the Kyle Pease Foundation. Here's an opportunity and a chance to learn a little bit more in this great video that uh, we produced about them. I was actually volunteering with the Atlanta Track Club when I saw the Kyle Pease Foundation um, run by, and I was like, oh, wow, I want to do that. And so I decided to reach out, and I got involved from there. It's very impactful what we're doing, and, you know, it really comes out to the work that the foundation is doing. It's incredible, and uh, I am so happy to be a part of it. It's pretty fun. We uh, cheer each other on as we race through the race. And we're like, go, go, go. Yeah, we, we, we joke around a good bit. And so, yeah, it makes it a lot competitive, but, but fun. These athletes love anybody and everybody, um, pushing them along. So um, 
yeah, if you want to get involved, I just encourage you to hop on and um, come out one day. Come be a part of this community. Come be a part of this party feel, this family feel that the Cop Peace Foundation has because it's still growing and we need you to help us keep growing it. All right, so now we move back to the race action. For the very first mile, we saw the men split 427 and the women go through in 455. Woo, I know, it's time to race. The women are well in those early miles. They were under race course record pace. Like, yeah. our, we, we figured that out, it was 512 per mile to be on Dorcas Tuatuk's record. She ran 108.22, so that is the big time of the day to keep your eye on. I think for the men's side, they're also thinking sub 60. Like they're, they're so yes. close to doing it on this course that uh, for, for that, I think there'll be 435, 434-ish is gonna be what they're looking to split per mile. Some of these guys have done it before and uh, you know they're working together right up in the front right now. Last year's race was a, went out a little slower than this because I actually spoke with Rory Link letter uh, the Canadian uh, marathoner and I asked him sort of a little bit he he saw that I was announcing the race and he messaged me he was like dude one of the toughest courses yes. I've ever run and so you know he was he, I asked him how does a course like this compare to something like the Houston half marathon where it's flat and traditionally very fast some of the guys in this race their personal best were set in Houston he said that's maybe like a three and a half to four minute difference. So that's that's it, that's a pretty big difference. And so last year they went out, I believe, in four thirty-five. I got the chance to look at his Strava splits, and uh, yeah, it, it gets more and more challenging as the race goes on. So they're on a mission right now, and they're pushing each other. They're out faster than last year. Yeah, two big groups right now, but you know, we talked about the hills, and even the downhills can get you as well. You know, the uphills are hard, and we know that. That kind of gets that cardiovascular system working, right? You start to really breathe, the legs get heavy. But going down, too, after you've run a number of miles on some downhill stretches, which we will have today, those quads start to burn. They talk about the Boston Marathon, right? That's coming up. A lot of these athletes are getting ready for that. They're building up that strength for the ups and the downs of the hills there. So, so many reasons to come here and run, not only to, to get this title, but because they are using this race to become better athletes and to be able to run against the best in the world, which we do have such good world-class athletes here today. Carrie, I guess for some of the people who may not be as familiar tuning into a like elite mar uh, race broadcast, uh, what is the pur so put on your coaching and your athlete uh -huh. here for a second. What is the purpose of setting a half marathon, maybe a month or so out before a, a marathon performance? Uh, what, what do you want to get out of a race? Oh, there's so much, right? I mean, just a little bit of a rest in that training. You know, we've talked to a lot of the athletes. Some of them are running up to 130 miles a week. That's a lot of running. So it gives them a chance to back off, taper, like we all do for a big race like this, taper down in training, but also go through the rhythm of knowing how to put your race shoes on, to get your race uniform on, to make sure you don't chafe in those areas that a lot of people need to practice, right? But they also need to mentally practice what it's like to toe the line, get into an, a competition like this, and get ready for their next big event. Yeah, this one's a good prep for Boston because of the hills. We, uh, we've got some other elites uh, floating around Paris Marathon, which is about like 35 or so days. Uh, there was, uh, what other marathons are coming up this spring? Well, we have, you know, a big London. summer. We have London, we have a big summer with the World Championships again. And, you know, a lot of people are also looking for the Olympics already next year. So there's just a lot of things on that race calendar. It's been a busy couple of years since the pandemic. Lots of people were trying to fit fix in things that they couldn't do during the pandemic. So yeah, we have lots of races and I think just people are excited to be back. So we're gonna come up on a 5K split in about uh, a minute or so on the men's side. The course record pace, they would they came through uh, in 14.29 through the 5K last year. So I, I figure they're gonna be fairly close or under that at this point. Uh, but you are already are seeing that there's a breakaway pack of about six or seven guys up in that front pack. Uh, and we'll take we'll try and get a closer look at some of the, the, the big numbers to help key off of and, and identify some of those athletes for you but uh, I think the major players are, are, are in this one.
Yeah, this is that point in the course where you want to settle in. You want to, like, just let the road underneath your feet just happen, right? You're looking around a little bit at the competition, but it's almost like the warm-up before the, the fireworks happen, right? You just want to get through the race with as little discomfort as you can right now. There's so much that plays into this. There's so many workouts, so many mental training, you know, exercises that go into racing. And right now they're just trying to calm themselves down, keep that heart rate down. It is actually a really nice day to race. The humidity is up there, but the temperatures are cool. And so I think they're much happier with today's conditions than they did, had last year. So that, this isn't the only race of the weekend, as we kind of previously discussed. There was kids races yesterday. We saw, we both participated in the, the All Comers 5K. Uh, you were with me step by step all the way to the finish line, so I appreciate you uh, holding back for me. Uh, but we also had like the USATF uh, Masters 5K. We did, and you know, we saw over 300 of the best Masters runners right here. It was really fun. The entire time we saw them getting ready, and you know what? If you're a Masters runner, you have to be over the age of 40, which I am, not Chris, but I am. And they took part yesterday, and we're looking at Ben Bruce right here. Ben Bruce, he won in a new course record of 15.06. Ben just finished second in the Masters race at the World Cross Country Championships in Australia, and this is like his first year being a, a Masters. He's such a great athlete. He's been on the professional world, or in the professional world of running for so long. He runs in Flagstaff. He was so excited to come. He loved it. He's getting his miles in for, for travel. Yeah, he is. But in the women's race, it was equally as exciting. We saw Jennifer Pesh. She crossed the line there. And she's from Garden State Track Club. She traveled here. And you know what? She set in a new course record as well, Chris. She ran 17.49. But there are other masters out there. It wasn't just the young masters. There was some really famous masters. The highlight of the race, I think, goes to Betty Lindbergh, and everybody from Atlanta knows Betty Lindbergh. Here she is, 98 years young, and she holds the world record for the 5K by a woman over the age of 95. She did it here last year. She did better her world record yesterday, but she did claim another national title, and she does say her sights are set to set a new record for 100-year-olds in just two years. Pretty cool. That's awesome. So we're looking at some of the uh, splits. I just got told David Bett was, I think, our leader through 5K, and he hit uh, the mat in 14.20, which is nine seconds ahead of last year's pace. David Bett is actually someone that I uh, was kind of taking some notes on. I got the chance to see him race uh, at Falmouth last year. Ben Flanagan came away with the win, but David Bett did not make it easy for him. He was on uh, Ben Flanagan's heels. And so David Bett is no stranger to the U.S. road racing circuit. Yeah, he's got a PB of 102.13, and he is well under that right now. But excited to be in a great race with all these other athletes. And he's putting a little bit of distance on them. And on the women's side, let me just say, uh, Joy Lynn Chimutai, he, she just went through 5K in 15.58. So right there, right on course record pace. Uh, so we're looking at, at, at two potentially uh, uh, historic days here in Atlanta. It's a big move right now up in the front of the men's race. David Bett is someone who has been uh, at the world-class level for quite some time. As junior athlete in 2009, uh, he was already representing Kenya at the world stage. He was the 2009 World Youth Championship silver medalist and then the 2010 World Junior Champion at 5K. So he's got some international uh, experience representing Kenya. And here, here he is today already putting his compatriots in the dust. Uh, we'll see if this move really pays off. Yeah, I love it when somebody attacks it. You know, it doesn't always play out that way through the entire 13.1, but it's really fun to see somebody. And, you know, this is Nicholas. Yeah. This is our defending champion that's out front right now. It was a little bit dark when we were trying to see the bib, but Nicholas... He's, Kasembe. Yeah, Kasembe is out there where he wanted to be. I mean, he did not shy away from the fact that he said, I want this win again. I want to run fast. And he said he's in better fitness and better shape than he was last year. So Nicholas Kasembe, your defending champion, is out to a hot start. 
Definitely, I would say, one of the most accomplished runners in the field. Not only does he have the, uh, the, the bragging rights from last year, but he also has a silver medal from the 2017 World Cross Country Championships and a bronze medal from the 2014 World Junior uh, Championships that were actually held out in Eugene. Last year's course record, he just absolutely smashed. But then after that, he went out to D.C. to run the Cherry Blossom 10-miler, won that in 45.15. And he's, you know, what worked last year, got a couple of nice paychecks from those races. Yes. All over again. So he's here this weekend, and he's planning to go to D.C. Uh, in a couple more weeks. Yeah, he loves it over here. But, you know, he's got such an interesting story. He spends most of his time in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then he trains in the winters of Japan back in Kenya. I, that's it. Uh, uh, that's a great setup, I would say, because like for some people wondering, it's like, oh, why, why Japan? He was actually, he told us yesterday that uh, it was actually a team reached out yeah. to him to to have him go out there and train. And Japan is a really great training environment for people who are focused on the roads. I mean, we, if you look at a lot of the personal bests, you know, it's kind of not as similar to the NCAA system, what where we see the the fast times on the track. They're definitely very much they they. They have success on the track, but on the roads, they absolutely thrive. We see just countless number of Japanese men year after year running, you know, under 210. And so if you're an international athlete, like sometimes I joke around, I was like, we should send an American out to train in uh, Japan because they're doing something right out yeah. there. But, you know, uh, Nicholas Kasembe is one of the athletes who has reaped the benefits of training out there um, and, and learned from some of the best. Yeah, I really like what he had to say. I mean, he takes time away from his wife and and his son back home in Kenya. And he said, listen, this is my job. This is what I do. But he really sacrifices a lot of time away from them. But he loves it there. He said it's a really great atmosphere. On the women's side, we see that our race is already down to, to two women. Uh, so they, they're ahead of course record pace right now. And Carrie, I guess when, you, when it comes to a race like this, when they're going head to head, like there's still so much, you know, so, so many more miles to go in this one. So how do you, how would you mentally stay locked in here? If you're running in second, do you let the person in first do a lot of the work? I mean, I do. And, you know, it's <laughs> I, a little selfish, but we, you got to do what you have to do to win. Especially early on. You know, I was more of a middle distance runner. I was a 1500 meter 5K lady and I like to run really hard the latter part of the races. So I think that if I were to be out here racing today, I too would want to be sitting a little bit, especially in these earlier miles. There are athletes that said, you know, like Vivian Chepkrui, she said, I want to be in the lead. I want to take control. This is something that she likes to do. She gets confident as each mile goes on. She gains more confidence every time she gets to the next mile in the lead. And so that's something that she's doing and we can see that she's there. So, so we've got a head-to-head a, a -head battle going on on the women's side. And on the men's side, you know, if you're Nicholas Kasembe, you, you're alone with your thoughts here for the next couple miles. I mean, how do, how, what, what kind of tips and tricks do you think you, you, you uh, have as a coach to mentally stay engaged if you're running the next 10 miles solo? Well, you know, he won here by two minutes, and we've said that. We're going to say it over and over again because that was such a huge win last year. But he knows that, and he remembers that feeling. And when you win such a big race like this by that much, you want that feeling again. That gave him just such a great boost for the entire year. So I I'm not surprised to see him in there, uh, you know, leading this much. I can see that he wanted to go for it. You could see it in his eyes yesterday. So as a coach, maybe you get a little nervous because it's pretty early on, but he's done it before. He's been there, done that. Let him go. It's always fascinating to me to watch races like this when when someone breaks away because if you're in the chase pack you're left wondering it's like you know it's a risk to not cover that move uh the, mo the, the most famous example of all of this is in 2014 meb making the breakaway at the boston marathon and i bet there were people in that backpack wondering it's like oh don't worry we'll catch him at 24 or yes. you know, 23 miles but he just never came back so you know you always have to wonder what's going on in the back of the pack right now and what they're thinking when when nicholas makes a big move like this mentally it is so hard to know what's going on behind you and that is one thing with leading races it can cause some stress that coaches and athletes don't like right you're wondering what is happening what's going on who's going to catch me what are they doing so you know for him i can see that 
Because Simba maybe wants to be out this far because then he can kind of see what's happening as he starts making those turns. But it is a scary thing when you are out that far and you have no idea what's happening. The athletes behind them, if they stay in a pack together, they can slowly work together to try to reel them in. But once you see an athlete have that much of a lead, it is really hard to get back on them. So I got the official split for mile five where Nicholas Kasembe made his big move. 417. That is spicy. Yeah, spicy is right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, the women's the women's lead pack still a, 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 a battle for for you know your top three right there. Uh, the pacemaker doing a good job, I would say. Yeah, he's doing a great job. You know, we love having pacemakers out there that can keep it rolling and keep it good. But you know, the woman in third right there. Hella Kiprop, she's a mother of four, and I gotta give her a big shout out. That's amazing. She works really hard, but she has ath or she has athletes. She has kids back home that are anywhere from the age of four all the way up to 20. And she too says it's taken a lot for her to be able to be this professional athlete, but she has great help back home, and she loves what she does. She loves being a professional runner. She gets to run with her husband a little bit, but uh, you know, she says it's just so much fun. She's running for her kids and excited to be here. Vivian Chepkrui may not have the fastest half mar marathon personal best, but I am impressed by her marathon PR of two hours, 20 minutes and 59 seconds from when she won the Vienna City Marathon back in April. Defended that title. Also has a 10th pl place finish from the 2020, uh, from the B Berlin Marathon last year yes. in 2022. Uh, so the marathon credentials, I actually got the chance to ask her yesterday, like, oh, uh, what's harder, the marathon or the half marathon? Some people, I would say, it's like, you're just running faster for a shorter amount of time on for a half, but no, she's like, marathon. It's and She said, quote, it's a journey. Yes, she did say that. She really likes the marathon, though. You can see that she's excited. She's going to be running Boston later this well, in a, in a month, basically. And so she's really using this race as well to, to get in here, really race hard, go home, put in a couple more weeks before she tapers down again for that. But, you know, what I love about Vivian is she said that her husband is her coach. He trains with her a little bit too. She comes from a humble background is what she said. And she just loves to run hard from up front. Again, kudos to our pacer Rob DeSisto who's a member of the Atlanta Track Club's open team doing a good job up in the front of that race the official mile split for the women at mile 5 was 507 we're coming up on 10k splits very soon and we'll get a better idea of how close they are to those course records So again, just navigating through this course, ups and downs, turns, as we've talked about. 27 turns on this course, Chris. That's a lot of turns and yeah. a lot. That's why you practice at hip mobility. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, it is kind of fun to watch when you, if you guys ever have a chance to go to the different Instagrams of these athletes to see their plyometrics, some of them are actually doing dances now. I love that. I think, uh, who is it? It's Faith Kapiegon. Yes. Did a really good job of sharing the videos and like setting it to, to the music. It, it looked like TikTok dances, but you're getting, you're getting some good exercise in. Why were we not doing that when we were racing? I know. I, well, I, I still probably could. I need all the okay. help I can get. Well, I can too, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that old. Hey, you got, you're coming back here next year and winning the, the Masters fight. Hey, let's go. So Hella Kiprop, you can see her digging into this hill. You know, as we said, we did run on the, the race course yesterday and they're seeing some of the similar hills that we had. And you know, there's some long driving hills and you see a little bit of a tilt in that form. They're just trying to get through those. They're gonna get some relief. You know, a lot of times when you look at the elevation chart of this course map, there is some, there's a lot of ups, but there's a lot of downs as we said. So you're gonna go up and down and up and down. But every time you hit a hill, you sort of lean in, you go up on those toes, you drive those arms and really work that hill and try to get up it as fast as you can. And it looks like Vivian Chepkarui has made her move into one of those turns right there. Sitting right on Pacer Rob. Yep. But now 
we've got two solo showdowns here where it's just like our leaders are have broken away. And you could see this yesterday. I think these two knew that they were going to be the ones to watch. I mean, they were very quiet and super sweet, but yet you could see the drive in their eyes and they were excited to get out here and work hard together. They do not train together. They are from the same area, but they do not train together. They sort of laughed when we talked about that. You know, you could tell that they are racers, they're competitors. One of the most beautiful things I, I like seeing when I watch some YouTube videos from, uh, you know, athletes training in Kenya is just the, the, the training groups and how different they all are. Some yeah. are just, you know, we've got uh, 10 or so people. Others are like, you know, we're, we run 40 deep and on a Saturday morning long run or whenever it is that they do, it looks it, like a race. But uh, everyone is out there getting the work in. And, you know, you always got to remember they're at altitude and there's a benefit to that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they, they all train hard. They definitely train hard. And, you know, Vivian Tepkrui, who's in the lead here, said, she said she likes the hills. She One of her favorite workouts is a 20K tempo run. And that is a really solid workout for a half marathon and obviously for the longer distance. But that was one that she said she really looked at. And she, she you know, got a little oomph from it because she knew she was ready to roll in this race because of that tempo. I need to... I need a couple more uh, 20K tempo <laughs> I do too. Uh, to get myself really in shape. <laughs> so I'm looking at some of the splits that we have. Uh, on the men's side, they hit the 10K mark. Nicholas Kasembe, your leader, in 28.17. Right uh, set, uh, to sec, set, it's the guy, Kadanu, I'm sorry about that, uh, was second in 28.31. So there is a little bit of a gap. And on, on the women's side, they're coming up on that, that 10K split very soon but Kasembe is your leader. Split 14.01 for the first 5K, 14.16 for the second one. Well, Kadanu in second place on the men's side. You know, he is that one of those guys that's broken 60 minutes. And for those of you who are sort of new to the running world or all these times are kind of confusing 60 minutes is that big mark it's almost like breaking that four minute mile barrier lots of people are doing it now because we do have this new technology which yeah. we can get into a little bit there's new shoes out there that are really helping people train harder recover better and race faster but yeah he is one of those guys Sage Kadanu who's in second who has that sub 60 time for his personal best Again, kind of as we teased at the very beginning for Sege Kadani, he's the only Ethiopian in the elite field, uh, and he's trying to pull off the massive upset here. So uh, even just cracking the podium would be quite the success for him. But we're up in front right now, Nicholas Kasembe, who has personal best of 13.17 for 5K, 27.02 for 10K, and 60 minutes and 21 seconds for the half marathon. He makes it really easy for, for us. He's got it listed on his uh, Instagram bio, and that's that's quite the flex. When, when your PRs are that good, <laughs> I think that's when you can include them in there. I love when athletes do that. You know, give us a little bit more background for us to chat about. He said his wife is a doctor, so he's got a little bit of a, you know, like a little, I don't know, one of the cards that he can lay late in the game or while he's training at home. She yeah, can she, keep him healthy. She's saving lives and he's crushing mine. Exactly. Yeah, a pretty po the house. power couple <laughs> right there. So he's up in the front. And the women have hit the 10K mark. We had a 32-17 split from Vivian Chepkarui. And behind her, 32-29 was Hella Kiprop. So about, you know, a 12-second lead there. Right on that course record pace again, Chris. Right I mean, both the 5K and the 10K were within a second of the course record pace. But right here, we can see Vivian now. She is in that lead, and you can see every turn now. She can kind of extend that lead. She can get lost up there and... You know, when you're in second place, not able to see first, mentally, that is super hard. All right, so Carrie and I got to witness a very important conversation two nights ago. Wanda Cooper-Jones, the mother of Ahmaud Arbery, who was killed while on a run here in Georgia in 2020. She spoke with author, runner, and activist Allison Mariella Desir about her son's legacy. She also was part of a special announcement of a partnership between the Ahmaud Arbery Foundation and the Atlanta Track Club Foundation. So proud. 
to announce that Atlanta Track Club has partnered with the Ma Arby Foundation for the first um, 5K run. It's gonna take place on May the 6th yes. <laughs> here, here in Atlanta. And if you're not in Atlanta, can you participate? How do you, uh, can folks from all over the country get involved? I'm hoping that it can be um, implemented as a virtual run as well, but if you're in the city of Atlanta, please come out and support the Atlanta, um, the Ma Arby Foundation, please. And you can actually sign up right here today. We've got the QR codes. The Run With Mod 5K will be held on Saturday, May 6th, the same morning of the Adidas uh, Atlanta City Games. Registration is open now, and all proceeds benefit the Ahmad Arbery Foundation. Pretty powerful evening. That was, it was. There was tears. I mean, it was really, really moving and important work being done by the Ahmad Arbery Foundation and the Atlanta Track. Exactly. So back to the race we go. Nicholas Kasembe, still your leader, and Vivian Chepkarui breaking away on the women's side. You know, we were making our notes together, Chris, and you wrote in your first line of Vivian Chepkarui's notes, you said, the one to watch. Yeah, called it from the beginning. I was yes, you did. Was looking at all the different stats, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, everything really stood out to me. She's got personal best, you know, from the track at 1,500 meters all the way through the marathon, and like, mm -hmm. everything looked good to me. I was like, all right, this is the one to watch. If we're looking for a new champion to crown today. Well, and we know she likes to win. She she won the Vienna City Marathon last year, and then she came back and won it again. And so it's just, or two years ago, and then won it last year. You know, when you win, it just gets in your blood. You want to do it time and time again. And you could just tell from what she was saying yesterday that that was really the, the goal. You know, the time, she was, she talked about the time a little bit. 108.22, she knew that was the record but she really was excited about the win. And the win, I mean, like you're rewarded for your hard work on the day. It's a nice little paycheck you get to take home. $4,000 for the winners of the men's and women's races. Also, if you push yourself hard enough, you get $2,500 as a bonus to break the course record. And she's right on there right now. Again, Nicholas Kasembe, your leader right now, and Vivian Chepkarui. I mean, shattering records is just her thing. Broke the uh, Vienna women's course record last year, and could add another course record to her resume here today. We're good. I've got another mile split here on the women's side. Vivian split 510 for mile seven. Vivian Chepkarui is married to Wisley Kangogo, who's also a very accomplished runner. Sometimes training partner. I mean, I'm sure like e nice extra help to have uh, for workouts. Oh, I think that is such an added bonus. And you know, it was kind of funny yesterday. We were talking to both Vivian and Hella and Hella said that she was faster than her husband and she started to giggle a little bit. Yeah. But you know, these women are hard to keep up with. I'm sure. <laughs> I've talked to, you know, someone like uh, Kira D'Amato here in, in the United States, former American record holder, and like how she's constantly on the search for, for training partners who can like, hey, can you help, like just find a college kid or someone who's like, can you run 218 marathon pace? That's what right. I'm trying to shoot for. And it's, it's, it's hard to find those people. It is hard. But it is. And now think about it, then you elevate it to the next level at, at, at the global stage, yeah. 
Yeah, we we like to find some guys to run with us, ladies. It's always fun, but you know, just having these groups, there's so many great groups around the country, around the world that train together. And these athletes here today all have different athletes that they're training with. But look at this prize purse, Chris. There's some nice money up front. Yeah, so if we look at it, as I said before, $4,000 to the winner, but it goes all the way down to eighth place where you can take home 250 bucks as well. So, you know, if it, sometimes it's really funny, I guess, Carrie, from when you were a competitor, were you sometimes ever thinking like, oh, there goes another $1,000. Yes. I got to push myself to the finish line. Yes, that's, you do. You know, that's rent or whatever. <laughs> that is, you know, a lot of these athletes do have sponsorships, so they are running for different shoe companies or different sponsors. But but always thinking about what you're running for, and that is obviously to get the most out of yourself, but this is a payday for them. Yeah. This is a work day. They are doing this for, you know, a living. So yeah, that $2,500 bonus is also a big flashing oh, mark yeah. right there. But I'm sure they're not thinking dollar signs just quite yet. Maybe that pops in when they get closer to the finish line. Right now, it's just get me to the next uh, aid station, get me to the next mile. Uh, uh, Carrie, how do you mentally break down a half marathon? And when do you start to think like, all right, I'm, I'm within reach of the finish? Yeah, I mean, I would say most people break it down 5K by 5K, especially early on, and then they maybe start to tick down a mile by mile. But they're also thinking about the different parts of the course. A lot of the athletes didn't go out to look at the course, but you know that they've looked at the last year's course footage or they have been looking at the elevation chart, so they've definitely broken it down. Yeah. Definitely have to do your studying before a race of this caliber. So we've got Nicholas Kasembe there, your men's lead pack, getting a nice tour of Atlanta all throughout the course. He's in Piedmont Park right now, which is a, I was actually trying to find it the other day on my run and I got lost, didn't end up there, but you've run there a couple of times. I have run in Piedmont Park and I've done a lot of the announcing there with the Peachtree Road Race, so a really cool place to be. All right. And then we've got our very own Ali Feller by the finish. Uh, just to give us a taste of like what it, what it's like right now. We're gonna try and connect with Ali shortly. But I mean, overall, this whole entire weekend, just the vibes have been amazing. Uh, the, 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 the city of Atlanta really embraces the races. Yeah, and I think she's ready to roll. So let's hear from Allie. All right, live from the finish line, it is a perfect day for runners. I always say, you know it's a good day for the runners if the spectators are just a little cold. If your mom and dad are talking about how it's so nice and warm out, not good for the runners, but I've got a little chill, which means it is a great day to be out on the course from the pros to the middle of the pack, all the way to the back of the pack. Very likely these runners are feeling good. My hair tells me it's a little humid, but it's Atlanta. We know how to handle that. The start line energy was incredible. We saw all the way from the pros, all the way back to wave E. Runners were happy. They were in good spirits. Pete the Peach was there for Atlanta Track Club representing making everyone happy and everyone looked good everyone is smiling it's a beautiful day I'm, I'm all hopped up on good vibes but I think that's because we've been a, having a dance party down here since 5 a.m. so it's a beautiful day at the races we're excited in just a not just a few minutes but in a little bit we will of course see our winners coming through and then it is a steady stream of runners all day long here our half marathoners our marathoners our Kyle Pease Foundation athletes well represented today. We're having a good time, we're feeling good. Welcome to the party. 
so Allie just crushes there with a weather report. She's got uh, a, a career there as like a meteorologist. Yes. So, uh, the conditions today, uh, Carrie, I mean, a, a little bit warmer than, than than ideal, but but still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's some humidity, and yeah. that's the thing that I think people have to keep in mind. Maybe not so much the athletes that are up front, but the ones back in the pack, they need to make sure that they are fueling and, and keeping that that body temperature down. But yeah, it's a pretty good day out there. The wind is not as bad as it was earlier in the morning. It's calming down, so pretty perfect conditions. The men have hit the 15K mark. Nicholas Kasembe, the leader right now, ran uh, 42.19 across that mat. Has a nice lead over Sagai Kadanu, who's, uh, who hit 15K in 42.32. Kidanu actually with a faster last 5K than Kasembe, 14.01 to 14.03, but it's still, you know, fairly close, and there's still quite a little bit of racing left. Yeah, it looks like you can see him there in the background of the race, and so, you know, Kasembe has to keep that pressure on. He's got to keep that intensity on right now. This is where you can make or break it, and he can feel him now. You know, when he starts to look back, he can see him, and as the sun gets brighter, as the, the, the air gets a little bit, or the, the you know, lighting of the streets get a little lighter, you really can see that. They're, they're getting close to yep. Piedmont Park. They're they running are, super fast, though. It looks like they're about uh, 11 seconds under course record pace still. So. Wow. And we can see here that Vivian is getting closer to Piedmont Park. And, you know, she knows that. She knows she's looked at the course. And those are some of those big landmarks, right? Those big places that we look at when we're studying a course. So she knows where she's at and what needs to happen from here on out. They should be hitting the 15K mark soon on the women's side. Vivian Chepkarui broke away early on in the race and has just kept her foot on the gas. She really has. There's been no real big looks back. You know, she's had time. She can't hear anybody right now. So sometimes you see athletes almost take an extended look back to really try to get a gauge of where they are, but we have not really seen that in her yet. She looks like all eyes are up front looking at what the course is bringing to her. She hasn't really faltered in her form. She looks really good. She looks very strong. And you know, she's getting ready for those marathon, that, that marathon distance. So she has the ability to be strong and speedy at the same time. So Vivian Chepkarui, Hit nine miles into Piedmont Park. Riding a little bit of a downhill there. You talked about the look back and how she hasn't uh, looked back at all. I sometimes think of it like, you know, that's for, for the competitor. If you're running in second place and you see the guy up in first looking back a couple times, that could be taken as a little bit of a sign of panic. Exactly. And that is something that an athlete does. You want to read the body language of someone in front of you and kind of take hold of that. You know, if somebody is looking back at you or you can kind of see them shaking their arms out or trying to relax. Like that can be a warning sign of what's happening to the athlete. So I am sure that we have the athletes that are closing in on Kasembe looking to see what's going on with his body and language. Yeah, and I guess maybe another sign is that the last mile split for him was, was 4.58, Ooh. so a little bit slower. I mean, just uh, the mile before that, it was 4.31. So he's he might be you know in a little bit of pain right now as he's getting caught. He's getting caught. Sagai Kadanu from Ethiopia running out of second place. This is, now we've got quite a race on our hands here. So for Sagai Kadanu, just 21 years old, got some pretty strong track credentials. Last year he ran 27-16 to finish sixth place in Henglo, which is considered the Ethiopian selection for the world championship team. But Nicholas Kasembe not letting he up. Didn't, he didn't like it when he could feel him come up on his shoulder. Then he started looking. He almost wants, he's saying, please take the lead. You can see this. He's going back and forth. He's weaving. And that is what he's asking of 
of Zagai Kadanu. He wants him to go up. He doesn't want him to sit. And so he's trying to see what he's doing. And that's why you see that weave. Now he's going to settle back in and just let his, his race take hold because clearly Kadanu is not willing to go up and lead. And not to say he's not willing to help, but he doesn't want to lead. He's sitting right there. That's where he wanted to be. Oh, here he goes. Just as I say it, then he decides to go to the lead. Hey, we could see a couple <laughs> lead changes here, and, and that's that's what makes racing really exciting. Kadani with the personal best of 59.52 is one of the guys who has broken 60 minutes before. He's also giving a couple looks back. He wants to know what distance he's got on him. Yep. So his last half marathon was to that personal best. Runner up at the BAA half just a couple months ago. And that was in rainy conditions. Yes, it was. And, you know, he trains in Ethiopia in a very remote area, very hot for most of his his running, he says. But he came over here, and he's very excited. He likes to run here in the U.S., it seems. But look at now. This is what I really like about Kasimbe. He did get passed, but he reacted. Mm -hmm. And now he's reacting again, and they're working together, or at least they're, they're racing each other, right? It's not just boom. Uh, Kadanu came up and just took off and, and blew the race open. This is what makes it fun. This is why people need to watch these long broadcasts, right? Because these races have lots of different things that happen. Yeah, just when you thought it could have been over, it was not. Yeah. Settling here, though, this is a big thing, too. They need to settle down a little bit and not get too, too caught up in the fact that, that Kadanu you know, really reeled him in. And I think that that's the big thing for Kasimbe. Kasimbe has to settle down and not get almost like upset that his lead was so big and now it's not. He can't get, can't panic right now. He is the defending champ. He is the course record holder and he's got to run that way, right? He's got to use that confidence right now. So on the women's side, they hit 15K, Vivian Chepkarui, your leader in 48.04. Second place, a little bit behind in 48.52, that's Hella Kiprop. And then Gebra Selimfente in third place from Ethiopia in 49.35. But Vivian Chepkarui has been the star of the show. Currently four seconds behind course record pace, but still has quite a bit of a runway to make that up. Zagay so Kadanu putting a little bit of a move on here. You can see some daylight in between the two of them. Now Kadanu has, might, might have a kick in him, and this is what we're seeing because he's got the track credentials. He still was racing on the track last year. Really solid time of 27.16. And that, you know, it just so happens that Ethiopia is so deep in the 10,000 meters on the track that he's number 41 on their all-time list. But to put it in perspective, on the U.S. side of things, he would be number nine on the all-time U.S. with a personal best like that. Yeah, quite the athlete right there. He said he started running in primary school, in his primary school, and he was recruited to run by a club. Somebody said, hey, I got to have this guy run. Greatness. Yes. And yep. the, every turn here, Chris, look at that long look yep. back. See, that's what I was talking about. He could feel that he was putting on that lead. And look at what a huge lead it is. We just saw second. And actually, was there another guy right there in third? I don't know if it was the motorcycle or not. We'll try and catch that. But wow, we are seeing Kadanu really extend his lead and taking those looks back and really working the corners. That's what I love about seeing a course like this with the turns. You kind of lean into it. You send slingshot off each turn and you get a little bit of a oomph, a little momentum after you go around those turns. And that's exactly what he did. So they're on the Georgia Tech campus right now. Kidanu would become the first ever Ethiopian men's champion. So all sorts of history making here in Atlanta today. And he is pressing on. Yeah, he looks got a little bit of a 
decline it looks like right here using these final moments of the race to really get every little bit out of the course and those downhills is really what you need there is a quite a bit of a downhill this last part of the race and then you do have to climb a little bit the last bit to to get to the finish line so they want to keep that in mind you know you want to really work these these downhills especially when you're trying to build a lead right here build the lead on the downhill so then you can kind of just push and get through the final stages of the race so just over two months from now centennial olympic park will play host for some of the world's biggest track and field stars the atlanta city uh, the adidas atlanta city games will be held here on may 6 featuring road races sprints hurdles and pole vault competition american record holder and three-time world champion noah lyles is the headlining athlete and he was in town just uh, last month and he paid a special visit to an atlanta high school we're here with Noah Lyles, and we're just going to spend some time to have a conversation with one another, ask each other some questions. It's just a fantastic opportunity. So the fact that they're able to hear from an Olympic medalist, a world champion, the U.S. record holder, um, if anything, it gives a little more credibility to everything that we've been preaching, for them to hear similar messages from a world champion about recovery and mindset and the ability to push yourself beyond your wildest dreams. Um, I think it's really important. I was born in a track field family so both of my parents did track I've been blessed to go out and have a lot of different sponsors so I've gone to the Met Gala I've gone to the US Open and been in the press box I've been out to the princes of Monaco and and met presidents and you know just doing really anything that I just have a passion for has opened up the doors for me to be able to do that stuff we've built a strong culture where our student athletes feel supported here they feel like they improve they feel like they have fun for him to be like, from me watching him to actually him being in front of me, I get to talk to him. It, it's, it's a once in a lifetime experience. I want to be in a program where everybody's flourishing, where everybody's trying to be their best, that iron sharpens iron, that everybody wants to be a world champion, and then we're all ready to go at it in blocks and in practice to be better. That's just the power of how mindset can change your whole trajectory of a whole day, a week, a practice, a year, a career. So awesome, I love that guy. He's so fun to watch race, but he's also such a great guy off the track. The Adidas Atlanta City Games take place May 6th, right here in Centennial Olympic Park in downtown Atlanta. I will be there because we are gonna be streaming it live on the Adidas YouTube channel. J Tim Hutchings and I will be calling the race. You guys gotta tune in. It's gonna be fantastic. Noel Lyle's quite the entertainer. He is. All right. Speaking of Woo. entertainment, here we go. The men's finish is almost upon us. It's the guy Kadanu, the 21 year old from Ethiopia. And like, might come away with the win here if he, if he holds on. He is, he's run 59 minutes and uh, 52 seconds for, for his personal best. Uh, which he was run in Copenhagen last year. That was a race where I believe it was like 15 guys had broken 60 yes. minutes and sort of like, I don't know, sometimes when you run that fast, you would have you would have won like maybe 70% of races everywhere else in the world. <laughs> so today, you know, a sub-60 effort could possibly get him, uh, get him to victory. He uh, ran 4.57 for the 12th mile. Yeah, you know, there is just this new... I don't know. It's just a new ball game right now in yeah. running. There are so many athletes that are thinking about being these amazing runners now, and they're tackling times they never thought they would. And so it's a really fun time. But I just saw one of the motorcycles come closer to us. So it's about time, Chris. I'm excited for it to get loud here in Centennial Park. The women have our lead runner, Vivian Chepkarui, is running through the Georgia Tech campus right now. So she's also, you know, en route to, to a victory if she can hold on. Sounds like she just passed mile 11. So just under two miles to go for her and she's really built this lead. She really tackled this course kind of head on. She wanted to lead. She said that yesterday, not afraid of hills. And she did it. Look at her all alone up front. That was a 517 for Chep Karui there. Wow. I mean, her form just still looks fantastic. 
Yeah, she looks great. She's been, she's tight. You know, she has her, her arm carriages tight. But then we look here at Kadanu and his arm carriage is a little bit lower, but he's looked really good too. He had that slow reeling in of Kasimbe last year's uh, winner and the course record holder. But once he went by him, you know, he stuck around for just a little bit, probably what, a minute or two. Yep. And then he really put on another surge, taking every corner, really slingshotting around each corner, extending that lead. And now we really haven't seen a ton of looking back, actually more looking at his watch, trying to see where he's at and how much further he has to go. He looked at his watch and saw 57.28 for the 20K split as he is closing in on the finish line in Centennial Park. And I kind of I kind of feel for our returning champion Nicholas Kasembe because he did a lot of the work early on and that last 5k for him 15:32. So he's he's in a bit of pain right now. Yeah, you know, I mentioned it was perfect conditions and I not I shouldn't say perfect because there is some humidity and if you aren't coming from humidity, it can be a little bit tough or if you are coming from humidity and just kind of you know, you might go out a little bit too quick. It, the thing with humidity is it creeps up on you when you least expect it because it does elevate your heart. There is a little bit more of the dehydration fatigue that comes into that. So lots of things can happen. And let's face it, this is a long race, 13.1 miles, especially for a guy like Kasimbe, who says he's not ready for the marathon yet. He's thinking about moving to the marathon, but he's more of a trackster now moving up in distance on the road. Same thing with Kadanu, at just 21 years old, a, a marath uh, half marathon performance under 60 minutes just gets you excited for the potential yes. once they go double the distance. And this is, he is really sprinting at this point, just trying to get to the finish. At this point in the 5K yesterday, I put in a little bit of a surge <laughs> and uh, I was like, wait, the finish line isn't as close as I thought, but he is closing in on, on the finish line. And we can see him. He's got one final little uphill here before he makes a final left turn down the finishing stretch. Chris, I'll let you take the rest of the call, but it is downhill once we can see him here. Downhill is the reward after tons of hard work in the hills of Atlanta. He's got the wheels. He's going to take the win here today. Just over 60 minutes, but he's your first ever Ethiopian men's champion of the 2023 Publix Atlanta Half Marathon, Sagai Kadanu. We are waiting to watch that clock. The course record was 60.36 or one hour 36. So close. What you was it? 64. Oh, shoot. Ooh. So maybe in that, you know, trade off where he was, uh, you know, battling with Nicholas Kasembe, he might have let a little bit of uh, too much time uh, slip. And he looks so good. And here we see Nicholas Kasembe. Kasembe, the course record holder. He's going to keep that course record. And he's got to be pleased with his race today. Kasembe finishing strong. Two podium finishes here at the Publix Atlanta Half Marathon. Kasembe finishing in 61 minutes and 34 seconds. So for those of you who like to know, what was that mile pace again? Right around 437 to 438 per mile 13 times in a row. Without stopping. <laughs> Pretty awesome stuff. Joffrey Kowich coming through right now into the finish line area. Kowich will take third place. Kowich, another one of these sub 60 half marathoners. Showing a little bit of how tough this course is. 62-12 was his finishing time. He was third here last year. And on the women's side, it's still Vivian Chepkarui pressing on. Yeah, this is where it gets tough when you are starting to chase the clock, but you're all alone for Vivian. 
She just crossed mile 12, so she is within a mile to go, and she's got to be excited with this lead that she's built. Going through a couple more results on the men's side, Kenya Shadrach Kiminning was fourth in 62.37. Raymond Magoot was fifth, 63.01. Magoot was here. This is his second time racing here. He was second last year. Bethwell Yegan going to take sixth place. Was one of the pros that we spoke with yesterday. Really a nice guy. Excited to be here. Was excited to be in Atlanta for the first time, but I think we're going to see him in some other races here for sure. My favorite part of talking to him is I asked him, oh, all right, so of all the other, you know, pro runners, Elliot Kipchoge, like, who do you look up to? He said, <laughs> myself. Yes. I love the confidence. And then he also loves, we asked about what other kind of sports he really likes to watch, and really, no. he loves <laughs> athletics. Just athletics. Which is also known as track and field. Uh, yeah. I love track and field. I do, too. These runners have been out on this course finishing these So... Sagai Kadani, your men's champion. 60 minutes and 42 seconds. Our very own Ali Feller will be grabbing him for an interview. 17 Daniel Publix Marathon at Marathon. Make some noise for our runners. Come on, So we'll get Ali in just a moment. We're just getting started. I love Ali's podcast, if the Ali on the Run show. She always asks great questions, and uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where she goes here with uh, Sagai Kadanu. So we'll toss it over to Ali at the finish. All right, guys, I don't want to disappoint you. We saw that finish. We saw that kick, like you said, comes here with a strong track background. Our first Ethiopian champion. Not a lot of English. He was in really, really good shape here at the finish. Sat down. He is cooked, rightfully so. So not going to be able to grab him for an interview, but seemed happy with how the race went. How could you not be? I mean, my goodness, we just saw what happened out there. So we're not going to have an interview with him right now, but uh, I can tell you he's on his feet. He's walking around. He is all smiles. So definitely oh. feeling good about that win. Hopefully we'll hear from him later today. But right now, hopefully he's off to take a well-deserved sit and celebration. Give it up for our runner coming through. All right. I mean, after running that hard, yeah. I mean, it's all right if, if it's okay. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, chat for a little bit. But as long as you're smiling. Yeah, as long as you're smiling. Yes, and he has a lot to smile. All right, we've got Rob Mullet coming oh, through. So many people here. And not, this is, is going to be a top 10 finish for him, nice. I believe. Yes, everyone here at the Atlanta Track Club knows him well. If you watch their YouTube channel, you can see all of the different descriptions that he does for plyometrics, also where to run here in Atlanta. He used to run for the Atlanta Track Club Elite, yeah. but he has moved on now, and he's in Indianapolis. He went away from the sport. He was an Olympian in the steeplechase in 2016. Representing Team GB. Took a little bit of a break from the sport, but then, you know, eventually you spend enough time around these road races, you're like, I want to try it. I know, you got to get back into it. So, Vivian Chepkaru, as we go back to the women's races, is within uh, closing distance right now of the finish line. Looking down at her watch right now. Gonna keep an eye on that. One hour, eight minutes, and 22 seconds is the course record. May have, the course record may have slipped away yep. at some point in the middle of the race, but still going to be a really strong showing. She's got an over 90 second lead on second place. Wow, yeah, she really has extended that lead. And you know, that is a tough thing to do, but I could tell yesterday when we were chatting with her, you know, she has put in the work. She's talked about her, her training going into this event. And she said this was a really important race for her. She wanted to come here and see what she could do. She wanted to lead. She wasn't afraid of the hills. You know, you could hear the confidence, although she was very soft spoken about it. As she puts in a little bit of a surge here, there, there is a chance. There always is a chance, right? 
She's looking at that watch. You can tell that she's dialed into it and she is pushing. Look at how she is up on those toes a little bit. I mean, she's run now, you know, very close to a half marathon and she looks good. She's on those toes. She's moving those arms. There's not a lot of movement with her shoulders or her head, which is really good. That's really where you can see the fatigue in these athletes. They're so beautiful, right? They're all fun to watch, but you can see when they start to sway and they start to lose that form and she looks really good. I think she was looking down at her watch and maybe did, wasn't looking at it and seeing a time. She was saying like, that's the 2,500 bucks I got, I've got to oh, get. Oh, and there, it looks like we're not going to quite hit it, but she just went by Rich Canal right there. He was giving her that, that cheer that we all know from Rich. He's so positive and so excited. But here she comes down, Chris. Oh, man, she is closing fast. Vivian Chepkarui with a marathon personal best of 220 comes out here and just crushes the elite women's field, wins the 2023 Publix Atlanta Half Marathon, Vivian Chepkarui. Wow, what a race for her. She needs to be so proud of herself. You know, there was a big group there for just a couple miles, and then it started to string out, and there was really no test for her at all today. But she kept the pressure on, and she was very close to that record for being all alone in that entire race. Official time, 68.46. So close. And not an easy course, as you said before. We have heard from previous athletes that have run this course. They would say maybe three, four minutes, you know, difference on a really fast course that's flat in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. So they definitely make you work hard here in Atlanta, but it is always fun to run here. It was a great day for racing. And she proved it today. Hella Kiprop, I believe, is still pressing on in second place. And what I love about this is they are such fierce competitors. You know, all of these athletes, they want the win. They do this for a living. But they were very, they were having fun yesterday. They were talking about their favorite movies. You know, we asked. Vivian Chepkarui, what her favorite movie was. She said she liked SeaWorld and we were at the aquarium, yeah. so it was super fun. All right, we've got our women's runner up pressing on here. That is Hella Kiprop. Entered here with a half marathon personal best of 67.39 and a marathon personal best of 221 and takes second in one hour, 10 minutes and 30 seconds, so 70, 30. Hella Kiprop is one of those athletes that runs a ton of miles. So she said she was happy to rest a little the week before this race. We've got a little bit of a battle here for third and fourth place. Gebra Salam Fente from Ethiopia. Gonna be able to hold on to third place has sat in third place since the 10K mark of this one. And she's gonna end up on the podium in one hour and 11 minutes. Veronica Wanjiru taking fourth. None of these athletes have raced here in the elite division of the women's race. They are all new. We had the top three in the men come back and it was a whole new field for the women this year. Uh, you know, and I know that they probably enjoy the experience enough. They'll probably be back for more Atlanta track club races. There's a full schedule ahead of us, but Peachtree is a big one. Yes, it's a huge one. You know, every year we come back on July 4th. It is so much fun, Chris. I think you need to come back. It's on my bucket list. For okay. Sure. Like it's a, to I, race or to do the commentary? I think to race. I've oh. heard of a, can I survive cardiac hill? We'll have to find I, out one uh, way. It is a killer. <laughs> and you know, but it is so much fun. And you talked about the Atlanta track club. Everyone in 
in this sport that's at the professional level as well as a being, you know, any type of racer. But the, the athletes that have raced here at the trials at Peachtree, now here at the half marathon, they love coming because they just, they do such a good job. They want the athletes to succeed, no matter where you're from. They want you to come here and gain that confidence to become one of the best. And we clearly can see that it happens. Yeah. It happens every time you run here. You go away thinking, okay, here we go. I'm not the only U.S. distance runner out there who should have, you know, Peachtree on their on their bucket list. It's one of the most yes. historic races and biggest you know, 10K in the world. Yeah, so you got. I have to do it at some point. You do. I mean, I need to do it, but I like to run my mouth too much now. <laughs> I do need to dress up a little bit more, to be honest, because there are so many cool costumes from everyone that's on TV to running the race. And I know, you know, they, they usually give me the shirt to wear. I need to ask for like the, the headbands with the bobbing, you know, stars and stripes. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be quite the look. Uh, all right, so we've got the Atlanta Journal-Constitution Peachtree Road Race. Member registration opens on March 8th. General registration opens on March 15th. Get your spot. Be there on July 4th. Yeah, just go to AJC.com slash Peachtree, and that's where you can see, hear all the info, read all the information, and also register. Please do. It's so fun. It's like a big party. I, I can't, I mean, it's a perfect kind of day, too. It's sort of like uh, your ideal July 4th. Yeah. Big road race, and afterwards. You Go party. Exactly. Go to the, gr <laughs> everyone talks about their cookouts after. Oh, I'm going to have to find the, per the, the the best one. The one that uh, someone could wheel me into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what a day so far we've seen here. It's some amazing performances. But, you know, we've seen almost 9,000 competitors over the weekend from Everyone from the youth races all the way up to, to 95, 98-year-olds racing in the 5K was pretty awesome. That's the beauty of Atlanta Marathon Weekend. Everyone from, you know, 60-minute half marathoners to 5Kers who, you know, like you said, 98 years old, running yeah. under an hour as well. Two very sub-60 um, yes. sub performances this weekend. Oh, We've got some of the final elites coming through on the finish line. Let's recap the day, because it was fantastic from start to finish. The start, right from the get-go, Nicholas Kasembe opening up a big lead, putting his foot on the gas and just pressing onward from the front. And at this point, I think, Carrie, you and I looked and thought, that he was gonna run away with this one, but nope. Yep. Uh, Sagai Kadanu making a move, catching up, just when we thought he was done, closed the gap, stayed on his heels for a bit, made, made the pass, and then it was game over from there as Kadanu powered through those final kilometers to take the victory in one hour and 42 seconds, just off of the course record, but making history as the first Ethiopian man to win the public's Atlanta half marathon. Yeah, one close to, had a lead of close to a minute. I mean, he had a big, big push in those latter mi miles and really looked good, really looked strong the entire way. All smiles. Yeah. Our top four men all broke 63 minutes. So really strong. And again, kudos to Former Atlanta Track Club elite runner Rob Mullet cracking the top 10 in, in 66 minutes and two seconds. Yeah, he said he went away from the sport and came back, and now he's kind of getting into this road racing stuff. He likes the longer distances. You know, used to run for about eight minutes. Now he's running for roughly an hour, maybe even moving on up to the marathon. That'd be nice. So we've got Joanna Stevens from Atlanta Track Club just crossed the finish line. But really quickly, we're gonna go over the women's race as if it was 
the Vivian Chep Perui show today. She was all over the place there. She thought, you know what? This is my day to run. Everyone's talking about these hills. I like hills. She runs fast on the flat, but she really cracked the tape there in a big lead, almost a two minute lead over second place and looked really strong today, Chris. 68 46 was her final time. And we'll be heading to the finish line shortly as our very own Ali Feller is trying to catch a moment with Vivian Chepgrui, your women's champion. And I, I see that Ali has got her. So we'll toss it over to Ali at the finish. Vivian, congratulations. You just ran nearly 13.1 miles by yourself. What was that like being out there soloing for a lot of that race? It was not ad. I had to push to myself. So that was by design. I love it. A lot of hills, a lot of turns. How was the course? The course is not easy, but uh, it was it was hard. You surged a little bit coming into the finish. It looked like you had one last kick. How that feel coming in? Did you surge a little bit? Were you pushing that pace there at the finish? You were by yourself, but you picked up the pace there at the end. Was that on purpose? You were by yourself, so you knew you were gonna win, and you got faster at the end. What was that about? What made you wanna kick it hard to the finish? Maybe I, I wanted to push to myself. Maybe I want to improve my, my time. Well, it was an amazing run. How do you celebrate? Wonderful job finishing your race today. So happy. So happy, as you should be. Vivian, congratulations. Amazing race out there. Chris, Carrie, back to you two. All right. We'll take a look now at the results of your top 10 women's finishers. Again, Vivian Chepkarui, your champion in 68.46. Hella Kiprop in 70.30, one hour, 10 minutes and 30 seconds for second place. And Gebra Sentem Selimfente rounding out the podium in one hour, 11 minutes and 12 seconds. But we saw the top five break one hour and 14 minutes. Such dominance with our our champion today on the women's side. She went for it from the gun and just crushed. And it was pretty awesome to see. Atlanta Track Club's own Joanna Stevens cracking the top 10 with an eighth place finish in one hour and 17 minutes. Top American on the day. And on the men's side, Sagai Kadanu timing his kick properly to win in one hour and 42 seconds to take down defending champion Nicholas, Nicholas Kasembe in one hour, one minute and 34 seconds. Your top, uh, your top six guys broke 64 minutes. Rob Mullet making the top 10 with that 66.02. I think your top American on the day was Cameron Bensley who finished back in 12th place in one hour, 12 minutes, and 10 seconds. Kadanu, being only 21 year, one years old, looked like a veteran today. And it'll be exciting to see him come back, hopefully, to Atlanta to race again. So, if you live in the Atlanta area and you're looking for a race to run, or if you're traveling to Atlanta, Atlanta Track Club has got lots of races coming up. Next up will be the Hawks Fast Break 5K presented by ShareCare on March 11th with the Atlanta Hawks. The Northside Hospital Women's 5K is on March 26th. The Northside Beltline 3K and 5K presented by Resurgence Orthopedics is on April 15th. And we've talked quite a bit about the Adidas Atlanta City Games and the Running City Mile on May 6th. There's the Braves uh, Country 5K 
on June 10th. And of course, the Microsoft Peachtree Junior on July 2nd, and the Atlanta Journal Constitution Peachtree Road Race on July 4th. You can learn more about all these ra races and register at atlantatrackclub.org. All right, Carrie, so all in all, an amazing day of racing here at the Atlanta, uh, the Publix Atlanta Half Marathon. It was so much fun. I mean, really, from the start to the finish, just such energy. I think you and I need to get out and go for a run now because yeah. it's not fair that everyone else got to race today. I know. <laughs> and so, I mean, of course, like this, it's just like really quality racing. I, yeah. I, I think like next year we could see, you know, potentially a lot more Americans come to something like this and, and battle it out for, you know, the, the, the victory. I mean, yeah. and, and compete with some the best. So. Well, seeing some of the world-class athletes that were here today, it really gets everybody excited to come back and race. And you know what they do here at Atlanta Track Club? They provide such great opportunities for athletes. And it was a really spectacular day and pretty proud of all those other athletes out there and all the other athletes that are still finishing. Yeah, so if you missed any part of the broadcast, you can catch it again on the Atlanta Track Club YouTube channel or Facebook page. You can rewind and and just relive all of the yes. action. If you're a participant out there today, it was a blast. I'm Chris Chavez, this is Kerry Thompson. Thanks for tuning in to the, uh, the Publix Atlanta Half Marathon.